How you going guys? Dean from Blog for the Blood God here with a really quick video tutorial showing you guys how to achieve a really basic wet blending effect. So what we're going to be doing today is on this cataphracti terminator, we're going to do some wet blending on this shield here to get it to go from a dark blue down the bottom up into a very light blue at the top. And I'm going to achieve that using Abaddon Black, Macrag Blue, Kelgar Blue, and Ceramite White. <clears throat> so, it's a really, really shockingly simple technique, wet blending. It's something that I've only sort of recently discovered, um, and it's very, very easy to do. So I'm going to walk you through how I do it. I'm no pro painter, this is just a technique that I've found works well for me, it's very easy to do. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you. So we're going to start off by getting a little bit of the Macrag Blue. Now obviously you can replace any of these colours with whichever colours you want to blend from. The only thing I'd say is it's easy, a lot easier if you pick similar colours. Whereas if you start trying to blend from a yellow to a you know, purple, you might struggle. But yeah, so basically we're going to thin down your blue paint and then we're just going to give it a coating all over. So I've obviously given it a solid base coat of Macrag Blue which I've just done several thin coats and then to achieve this effect we're going to give it another coat now so that it's nice and wet and then we're going to dry off our brush and then we're going to get the Abaddon Black just pinch a tiny little bit Sorry. Get. So we've got bugger all on our brush. I'm not going to bother thinning that down. And then we're just going to, from the bottom, we're just going to start by brushing it on a little bit at the bottom. And you just sort of, while it's wet, just stroke over it like so. And as you put it on, it'll start really dark black down there, and those two colours will start to blend together. Then get the black off of our brush so we've now got black leading into blue then we're going to get the lighter blue and again while this is it's really important to do this while it's all still wet so now we're going to start from the top And we're going to blend it down. Like so. So, as you can see, it's blending from the black up into the light blue, up into the dark blue, into the light blue. And if you feel like you need to go brighter, like I, uh, looking at that, I feel like the light blue at the top isn't quite as light as I'd like. Just give it another dose. Because naturally, as you blend the two together, the light blue will become darker because it'll start to blend with that dark blue. And the uh, dark blue will become lighter. So if you want to lighten up the top, like what we've got there, I'm just going to do another, another pass, if you will. And the beautiful part about wet blending is if you do like what I've done here and go crap now I've done too much that light blue is now too light you can always just grab some more of the dark blue get back into that middle bit and blend it back out and you can blend in either direction as you go across. So there's really, it's a lot of guesswork. There's no real rhyme or reason, but you can, um, you can get the idea. And then what I'm going to do for the very top, because I want the very top of it to be, I want it to be blue but I want it to be the lightest blue possible, is I'm actually going to get some of this Ceramite White and mix it in with the blue that we've got until I get a nice 
light blue. And then I'm going to take it so that there's not much left on my brush. Find a cleaner part of the palette. And then I'm just going to do that along the very top. So if you put it on like that and you feel like you've put too much on and you feel like when you start blending that down it's going to be too much, just take all the paint off your brush and that way you're not adding any more and then you just blend it in. So I feel like there I've done the same thing as I did before, I've gone a little bit too far. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of this dark blue, I'm just going to blend it back. And it's simply a matter of light, thin layers going back and forth while the paint is still wet until you achieve the uh, gradient that you want. Always my advice is to go um, horizontal to the uh, gradient that you're trying to achieve. So if you want it to go from light to dark, do your strokes that way. Whereas if you wanted it to go from light to dark, you'd do your strokes that way. That makes sense. And if you want to smooth it out, like I'm actually pretty happy with that there. I just want to smooth out that top a little bit. Ah, fuck. So you'll do stuff like that, where you haven't quite got all the paint off your brush. That'll happen. But because it's still wet, and we are doing wet blending, you just blend it back in. very very easy technique to achieve but I think a lot of people just get sort of scared off by it so yeah that's really basic five second job on how to do wet blending so I'm now going to go do some edge highlighting on it and I'm also going to freehand a logo into the middle of that and uh, yeah I'll show you how we go alrighty guys so we've seen the wet blending technique, I've shown you how I've done that and as you can see I've achieved quite a nice little blend, trying to not get glare on it, that goes from the light blue all the way down into the black gradient through dark blue. Then what I've done is I've just done some simple edge highlighting just on the upper edge here. I used white along the top edge and then light blue along this side. And now I'm going to start doing a freehand World Eaters symbol. So the first stage to get this freehand World Eaters symbol was to paint this, which is essentially the uh, the white canvas that I'll be painting the rest of it on. So all I've done to achieve that was a simple dot right in the center. Then from that dot, I just went around and around and around in circles to get the size of the circle that I wanted. I always highly recommend doing that instead of trying to draw like the outline of a circle and then filling it in, because trying to draw, draw an outline of a perfect circle can be quite difficult. Where it's doing a dot and then just making it bigger and bigger and bigger makes it a lot easier to keep it in a perfect circle. Then all I did was add the spikes on the outside, which all I did was add one top and bottom, one on the two sides. Then I added one in between, one in between, one in between, one in between, one in between until I got the number of spikes that I wanted. So now that I've laid down that base, I'm now going to go through with the red and I'm going to paint on the actual World Eaters logo itself. And then on the inside of that, I'm going to paint a world. So I'll be right back with you guys in just two seconds. And there we have the red world eaters symbol. So all I've done to achieve that is I've done a red ring all the way around the outside, just a, you know, a millimeter or two in from the outline. Then I've just painted in the teeth, just, just doing straight strokes. The tip to getting a sharp point or a trick I should say, not necessarily the tip, but um, is to use your brush and just say you're trying to paint that top tooth there, right? What I did is I painted like that, put your brush down and then drag away and as you get closer to the tip, pull off. And that way it sort of pulls up into a tip, whereas if you were to try and paint that way, you're going to put a, more likely to put a blob at the end and give you a sort of a rounded point, whereas to get that fine uh, tip, you want to start at the thicker end of the point and then pull away and pull your brush like away as you go. So across and then up as you want it to come off into a point. 
and that helps get those nice sharp tips. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and paint the planet in the middle there. So I'm just going to essentially do a big green circle and fill it in with some uh, water and um, hills and features like that. Topographical features. And there we have it, folks. So I've gone in and I've painted the little world in the middle of the World Eaters logo there. And I also went around with the white brush and just touched up a little bits and pieces. So all I did to do that little world was I just painted a big green blob and then I used a similar effect to the wet blending where while that dark green was still wet I got light green and just splotched that in and sort of swirled it around. I was a lot less um, accurate with this because obviously I was trying to create something that would look like a natural, you know, um, continent and they're not perfectly smooth so that was a, a bit more splotchy all over the place. And then I went in with another even lighter green then in the center I did a big blob of blue and then I sort of swirled that around a little bit and then put some lighter blue in there as well. And uh, originally I had the planet going all the way up to the red on the teeth but then I decided I wanted to have a white outline on those teeth just so that they really stood out against the, um, the world. So that's my little freehand World Eaters logo on the uh, captain here. And uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it off. I might attempt a freehand scroll or something along the top or the bottom, depending how I feel, depending if the mood strikes me, but for tonight I'm going to pack it in there. So yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel. Just ch uh, chuck blog for the blood god in. Blog for the blood god. And I've got other painting tutorials on there. Lots of battle reports, tactical reports, all kinds of content on there. And also head over to my Facebook page, which is just facebook.com forward slash blog for the blood god. And that's probably where you've seen this video, but make sure you head over there, check it out. I've got a lot of other content on there as well. So I do cover pretty much every single aspect of 40k I cover in some respect. So make sure you head over there, check it out, give it a share, give it a like. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know... If there's anything else that you'd like to see done in a tutorial, because I've done a speed painting tutorial and now I've done a wet blending slash freehand tutorial, if there's any other techniques you'd like to see, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.